So we've got an interesting scenario going on in the NFL right now. This is uh, fall, or sorry, this is January of 2023. So we're wrapping up the 2022 season right now. Uh, we're about to go into week 18, which is the final week of the NFL season. And we have a very unusual situation because in week 17, we had a game canceled. Uh, and that game is not going to be made up. Uh, I have no objection to them canceling the game or not making it up. That all makes perfect sense to me. That seems fine. But the NFL has just recently made a decision, um, and you can watch everywhere else about what the various permutations are and whatnot. Most news outlets are really looking at the specific scenarios for this year. You know, if this game goes this way and that game goes that way, then this is the scenario for the playoff. But um, I'm kind of attempting to glean out of that a little bit of actual principles. You know, what is the precedent that's being set here? So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly review those. And, um, it, you know, I have no idea if the NFL will follow similar precedents in the future or not. I would hope that they would, but, you know, I'm, I have no idea. <laughs> and I will say that this is very specifically because the canceled game does not affect who makes the playoffs. Um, if it had, they might very well have picked a different way to do things. But it does affect the seeding and who ends up playing whom as far as the matchups go. So what are the principles that the NFL seems to be going by? Well, first of all, standings are by winning percentage. Um, that's always been the case. So that means if teams have different numbers of games, you simply calculate of the games that you played, what percent did you win? And for this purpose, by the way, a tie counts as half a win, um, which is important to note, a canceled game is not the same as a tie. In practice, you end up in the same spot as you would have if it had been a tie, um, unless somehow you ended up in a situation where there were many ties and many canceled games. That's almost never gonna be the case, but if you're talking about just one game, yeah, you're gonna end up in the same spot of the standings as if you had tied. Um, now, the second part of it, so that's, that's, that's not new, that's always been the case. Okay, the second bullet point. We're gonna calculate, so if on the first bullet point, we're gonna calculate the official standings based on the winning percentage of the games that got played, whatever those games are. Then what we're gonna do is create some alternate timeline standings. Um, and these are based on the potential standings that could have occurred depending on what results could have happened in the canceled game or games, all right? So then we use the real standings based on the games actually played to determine seedings and thus matchups, but not necessarily to the field to determine where the game is played. So ordinarily we say the higher seed always gets the home game in the playoffs, but it turns out if there's canceled games, that's not always the case. And here's the way that that works. So once the matchup is determined, which is based on seeding, if the real or true standings, the ones based on the games actually played, and all of the alternate timelines have the same team as the higher seeded team, then that team is the home team, okay? Nothing especially controversial about that. However, if there's a disagreement between these timelines, then if it's in one of the first two rounds of the playoffs, a coin toss determines which of those teams is home. So it's not just the team that's seated higher as per the real standings, because if the other team could have been seated higher in one of the alternate timelines, then what we're going to do is toss a coin to determine where the game is going to be played. And um, then for the conference championship game, if you have that level of disagreement, then we're going to play the game at a neutral site. Right? So those are basically the rules that, they, that they've put into place. Uh, do I think that these are good rules? Uh, in my opinion, not really, um, but this is what they've decided to go with. Um, it's, it's a little bit weird, but um, I think it will be interesting to see how it goes. So perhaps after week 18 is played, um, I'll actually compile all these standings this way and see what actually happens and if these principles that I've kind of gleaned out of this are in fact correct. Um, so for those who want a review, after week 17, these are the current standings. Um, so this would be your one, two, three, four, five, and six seeds. Yes, seven teams make the playoffs. I didn't bother with the seventh team. First of all, I wish that there weren't seven teams in the playoffs. And this is coming from, by the way, a Patriots fan who, you know, the Patriots have a shot at making that seven seed. I'm not totally sure how they've managed that, but whatever. Um, but no, I don't think there should be seven teams, but that's not the point of this video. So here we've got um, six team, the top six teams as it stands right now. And the canceled game was the game between Buffalo and Cincinnati. So Buffalo and Cincinnati both have 
and will have one fewer games than all of the other teams. So as you can see, Buffalo, for example, if they could have won the game against Cincinnati, uh, they would be tied with Kansas City and have a shot at the number one seed. Uh, that is a lot less likely now. Um, it's still possible if Buffalo were to win and Kansas City were to lose, then um, then Buffalo would jump ahead and take the number one seed. Um, and you know some of these will make the alternate timelines entirely unnecessary, right? Um, and same with Cincinnati. So a big a big deal here is Cincinnati and Baltimore because uh, Baltimore is playing Cincinnati this week. So if Baltimore were to win that game, then they would finish with a record of 11 and six, and Cincinnati would finish with a record of 11 and five. Well, 11 and five is better than 11 and six. So Cincinnati would win the division. Um, but it would in that scenario be that Baltimore would have beaten Cincinnati twice and had the same number of games. So there's this kind of feeling of it's not fair that Cincinnati just takes the division. I kind of think it is fair, but it's, it's the way that's kind of been decided. So that's a scenario where we could have a coin toss to determine who might play a game between the two of them. If uh, Cincinnati were to take the three seed and Baltimore the six seed, with Baltimore having won this game against Cincinnati in week 18, um, then we could have a coin toss. And then the neutral site scenarios for the AFC Championship game are all if the AFC Championship game is between Kansas City and Buffalo or Kansas City and Cincinnati um, in a scenario where they, um, you know, where, where the canceled game could have made a difference about who was the higher seed. So anyways, it'll be interesting to see how it, how it um, runs out. I think once uh, week 18 is done, I'll go ahead and... Um, create the alternate timeline scenarios. There's technically three alternate timeline scenarios. One where Buffalo wins this game, you know, Buffalo would have an additional win and Cincinnati an additional loss, and another where Cincinnati has the additional win and Buffalo has the additional loss. And technically there's also the one where the two tie each other. Now the truth is that when they tie each other, that's actually gonna be the same as the actual official scenario. And it's also not gonna be the best scenario for any of them. So I don't think that one's Going to, going to matter much. But the other two um, have the possibility of shuffling some seating around. I think it's important to note that we're talking, we're not just talking about a shift of seating, right? So if, you've got a, if you have a game where um, you have three versus six, but it could have been one versus six, well, that's same team is still higher. So, you know, the home field would hold there. It's only if it would flip who was at home, who was home field, if the lower seated team could have possibly ended up seated higher than the, than the higher seated team if the game had gone a different way. So anyways, um, yep, that's about all I have to say right now. These appear to be the rules that the NFL is um, is putting into effect as far as how is home field in the playoffs determined when a game has been canceled. Um, again, this is specific to when the game canceled game doesn't affect who is in the playoffs, it only affects um, the seating within the playoffs. So anyways, uh, I think this may be a time when I can do a follow-up video uh, following following week 18. We'll see what happens. Um, if you follow my channel, you know I'm all into tournament structures. So when something like this happens, I think it's, it's very interesting to watch. So let's all take a look at it. Let me know what you guys think. Bye.